Oh, for sure. James Ham, uh, live from the basement of uh, Golden One Center. I, I didn't I didn't know you were you were hanging around the arena today. I, I we, we knew you were at uh, shoot around for sure. Um, proper introduction. 1320 Kings insider and creator of the Kings beat. Uh, James Ham with us here on ESPN 1320. Mm -hmm. Boy, we got a lot to talk to you about. Um, you talked to De'Aaron today. Uh, yep. You and Sean did. Um Let's start there. Uh, any any takeaways from that conversation? Anything stand out in, in his time speaking to you guys today? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway was that uh, he's not playing until he's 100%, which means hmm. if he doesn't walk out on the court and feel like he's got it, he's not playing. Um, you know, we asked – I specifically asked him about MRIs. Uh, he popped off with this strange answer, well, I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. Um you know, neither am I, but I, uh, you know, I, I do play one on the internet sometimes. Um, so I, I don't know. Overall, I just thought, uh, in number one, he says he's been struggling with an ankle injury for a long time since he had the, the grade three sprain, uh, which is a complete tear of the ligament, um, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And he really hasn't been able to get it right. And all of a sudden he, uh, he tweaked it or something at the, during the Detroit game, uh, he came out the next day and just didn't feel it. And, uh, you know, so here we are. And he was on the court shooting. Um, it didn't look like he had been doing a lot of that. Uh, it, it wasn't, you know, the greatest shooting performance I'd ever seen from De'Aaron Fox. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, even Marvin Bagley was on the court shooting. It looked like Marvin was a lot further away. Like most of his stuff was uh, like ground-based, two feet on the, planted on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, getting leaning up onto his toes to shoot shots and stuff. It did not look like he was very mobile. Um, but overall, I was, uh, you know, Fox is who he is. He, he, I, I felt like maybe, if nothing else, he was a little bit more of himself than uh, than what he has been for a while. He was a, a bit of a smartass. And, you know, like, I think I can say that word. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, he was, he was uh, you know, um, like kind of snippy. A little bit here and there uh he did not like questions about whether the franchise has talked to him about potentially being traded mm -hmm. um you know he said he's had those conversations with them he understands what they're doing they understand what he's doing um and, and overall i i thought it was again it was a lot more of the De'Aaron fox that we're used to seeing so maybe this has been a good mental break for him which he didn't like that question either uh, I guess I did ask him and he said, look, I, you know, just had COVID and took time off, you know, or like I've had time off and he's like, no, um, I, so he was on the road the whole time. But, uh, at the same time, I, I just think that he's probably, if he doesn't play tonight, he, he's gotta be close. Yeah. You would assume, but, uh, February 10th is coming up pretty quick and maybe he's just waiting to see how the dust settles. I was going through here and I found another clip. It's five games, by the way. Sorry. Five go, go, go. It's no, five saying, games I found too. another clip of De'Aaron Fox um, in the media scrum. I sent it to you, Damien, of oh. De'Aaron Fox. Uh, do you have the audio of when he was in the media scrum? Yep. Stop asking me stupid <laughs> questions. About yeah, I think that was... I think that was De'Aaron. You you mentioned the, the... I believe this was De'Aaron after the trade conversation. Stop disrespecting me, bro. Like, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's De'Aaron Penny Fox there. Because um, your takeaways were similar to ours when we were uh, playing some of the sound that you had earlier. Is like, I don't think De'Aaron was too amused by some of the things that were uh, being asked today. And um, I thought the exchange about the trade was a little clunky. Because um, like De'Aaron didn't want to answer clearly didn't want to answer I, I thought that whole exchange was a little it was a little it was a little awkward um did they did he take part in the shoot around with the team or did he just do his own individual workout you know we didn't get to see a lot well we didn't get to see any of it so oh. I mean he was in uniform he was on the court yeah um, that is like if usually if a guy's in uniform and on court uh, that usually means he's at least there uh, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure I, I do like, he was evasive with, qu uh, quite a few of his questions. Um, and you know, again, he, uh, like, I, I, I want to give him a little bit of a break on some of the questions regarding like trades and stuff, because like, look, he's a player. He doesn't control any of that. Mm -hmm. Like he had the conversation with the team. 
He didn't tell us exactly how that conversation went. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, uh, he specifically said, like, well, what kind of rumors are you talking about? Like, he he kind of quizzed Jason Anderson from the B about uh, sort of his line of questioning. And uh, and then he said, look, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit here and comment on some some things that are out there from people who don't know what's going on inside, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of got his frustration on some of that stuff. Um, it's just, you know, we're so close to the trade deadline, it's hard to ask players about the trade deadline and specifically, like, do you know, almost like, do you think you're getting traded? Right. Are you not playing games because you think you're getting traded? Like, none of that is the case. Like, he, he does not... He's not sitting out because he thinks he could or could not get traded. The franchise is not sitting him out. Uh, that's one thing I do know. Like, he has been medically cleared to play. Uh, it is a pain tolerance issue, whether or not he can go or not. That's on him um, to make that decision. And it rightly should be on a player's, you know, if he doesn't feel right, he shouldn't be out there, uh, especially when you still got $100 million <clears throat> left on your contract after this year. So if, if there is something wrong in there, um, then, you know, they, they need to figure it out. Uh, I just know that MRI was clean. He, De'Aaron Fox did not say that, but, uh, like, we did learn that afterwards, that, that MRI was clean. Hmm. Uh, Ham, help me out here, uh, how these things go on the road. I know there's not technically, like, practice time, but, I mean, do they do they, they have shoot-arounds? on the on the road right like I, I guess what i'm getting at is today quite possibly do you know if this was the first time he's been on the court since last friday or something like that no i, I mean he's been on the court uh like in pregame warming up and then okay. gets done with pregame and says he can't go so yeah. I, I do know that like I, he he has been like visibly seen on the court doing his thing and then like he's not ready to play um so like, I, I don't know if they've had a lot of practice time between, like, during their 11-game road trip, uh, their 11-day road trip. They did have a couple of days where you could clearly see that they would have practice mm-hmm. um, just because of off days. You know, back-to-back off days, usually they practice at least one of those when they're on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I, I understand, you know, like, there's going to be questions. But you also have to remember, like, in the age of COVID, there's not a single reporter from Sacramento tracking that team. And, like, not to be disrespectful, but no visiting media showed up to cover the Kings today. No visiting media is showing up in a in a, another city to hit the Kings shoot-around. This is not. exactly the Heatles. Yeah. <laughs> They're just not. You know, like, when the Warriors come here for a practice, you got 20 media members for shoot-around. And, and then the Warriors are an open book, and you can go sit and— hang out with Steph Curry for an hour and, and shoot the breeze and, you know, have a conversation on the record, off the record. You can get Steve Kerr off the record, um, you know, just to have discussions. So, yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's just a different vibe. Um, Sacramento Kings travel. There's no one showing up for their, their media sessions at this point um, for for practice or for uh, uh, for shoot around just because I, none of us are traveling. Hmm. And we – don't know if he's going to play tonight and mentioned if he's waiting to see how the dust settles for the trade deadline. I, again, you know, the longest trade deadline in the history of the NBA continues. There's still five games before the, I mean, at that point we're talking 10 missed games. If he's, I, I know you're not reporting that. It's just like, yeah. I, we're, we're trying to figure out what's, what's going on here. If it has anything to do with the trade deadline, we're talking 10 missed games because of a sore ankle and ultimately three weeks, four weeks. That's man. That's that's again, he might be back tonight. Like who, who, who really knows, but the, it just, it's that's just the question. It's just more, it's just adds more. Con, this, it just adds more confusion to this, to this thing with De'Aaron. Yeah, I think it does. Like I, I think when we were, when we were allowed to speak to him today, it was with the assumption that maybe he would tell us that, yeah, I'm coming back. I'll play tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, But now we get to a point where we still don't know. Like we won't know until game time. And, and actually I I think we do know, like just by his approach, the way that he spoke to us, the way that we walked away from that conversation. 
I would be surprised if he plays. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I would be. Yeah. I would be surprised. Like there was no um, like guarantee of any kind. And again, and like people who were out there speculating, like I've I've talked to people all over the place about the potential of this injury. It, it's not a sprained ankle. It's the the MRI is clean. This mm-hmm. is about a pain tolerance issue. He did say he has like zero mobility in the ankle that he has for two years. He hasn't had mobility. Um, so maybe that's an issue that, that needs to be taken up with the training staff of how to work and get the mobility back in his ankle. Because um, mm-hmm. I know that like that was an issue with Shaq years ago and he went to the Phoenix Suns and they were able to revitalize him completely mm-hmm. and, and like completely break open his ankles and, and – have him, uh, you know, kind of get a lot more flexibility and movement, and so, yeah, mm. it, it's it's a it's a strange situation. We'll come back. Uh, we'll talk more about this uh, strange situation. I want you to you 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 everybody listening to this should be listening to the Kings Beat podcast. The you know, Kings fans, it's much must listen. But you told a, a, a story. I think I had heard in shorter form from Doug Christie. But it is important uh, to this situation. And your partner, Sean Cunningham, sent a couple of sneaky things there uh, into the podcast that I want to ask you about. So we'll do that uh, when Dilo and Casey return here with 1320 Kings Insider James Ham live from the Golden One Center. Dilo and Casey return here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. All right, clear. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, I think I didn't know time- you were staying there. You, we we could have done any time you wanted to. I know you're just sitting sitting around there. You can stay on as long as you want. I don't know what you got to do out there. Um, uh, not a whole lot. Yeah, I got I got do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, am I still it, good audio wise? If I pull the mic down out of my yeah, mic? you're fine. Yeah, okay, you're fine. Cool. Yeah, you're fine. Um, do you have a mic for your phone? Do you plug a, f- a mic into your phone when you do uh, those videos? Okay. Yeah. So I, I have a setup, I uh, which I can actually put together right now while we're sitting here. Um, so I have a, a little mini tripod. Mm. Okay. With a, on top is, is for my phone. But then I have this bracket in the middle. So mm-hmm. I'm going to put the mic down for a second. You should still be able to hear me. So when I'm at games, I attach my road here. Uh, I do this at practice as well, but like when I'm like tonight, this plugs in and away I go. There you go. Okay. I don't know if you can. Oh. Yeah, I got you. Oh. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So this this sits <coughs> right up by the King's camera mm-hmm. and shoots out. Um, that's why I have, like, super good video every single time. Um, plus, you know, I've, it's an iPhone, like, 13 Max. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's an up-to-date. Um, yeah. So I, I get good audio and... Um, and then I don't have to wait for their videos because that usually takes a while. Yeah. 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 So uh, it was funny. I was at uh, I, I swung by and 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 uh, said hello to uh, Jim from Brickyard Industries. Uh, mm. He he made a sweatshirt for Sean today, and uh, he has you guys in his in his garage on this giant TV sitting there. Um, oh, that's like, awesome. Yeah. It's like you guys just hanging out. It's like, hey, look at that. That's awesome. Love yeah. it. It's, it's, I don't know why it's, uh, it's always cool to see us on the, like a screen, like a TV. Uh, I know St- St- Steven had tweeted us a, a picture of a, you know, he's watching us on the big screen and it's like, ah, that's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's like we're, no, it, it is we're a TV cool. show. Yeah. And yes, uh, Rich from somewhere. I am my own uh, video and sound <laughs> guy. Uh, yep. Have to be. Well, that and I mean, uh, these phones now, they're the video is better than most of the big cameras that the like local media companies come in with. 
Um, the picture quality is incredible. And I can cut and edit video within seconds. Like yeah. Fox had a, he actually had a natural break at like 2.15. So for Twitter, you can only post, um, you can only post videos that are two minutes and 20 seconds and less. Uh, so I'm literally able to, I was able to stop at 2.15, like shift it into Twitter, load it up while we were doing more stuff. And and then as soon as I was, uh, I had a, like two seconds, all I had to do was tweet it out. So yeah, it like the technology advances. When I first started doing this, I had a flip. You remember <coughs> flip video? Oh yeah. 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 I did everything on flip and then it would, it would plug in to the side of a laptop. Yeah. So that's how I would do oh, video. Man. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. You could do do everything right there from your phone. Get it tweeted out in seconds. Yeah, you got to be mobile. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. They can't hear me. Do I need to have the mic closer? Oh no, I heard everything you said. I don't know what they're talking about. All right. Cool. I can turn my mic up too. I don't know if uh, that's better. No, that created a weird background noise. You were uh, fine exactly where you were. Okay, ignore, I'll... ignore, ignore, Brian. Brian yeah, bro- ignore it. Brian had you. I think, yeah. <laughs> Bob's like, we could hear you. Yeah, no, you're good. All right. Uh, cool. Yeah, we good. We good. I like that tea. What do you got there? Uh, you- what happened? That's Nipsey. You said oh. you like his his oh, yeah, put yeah. his yeah. That's Nipsey yeah. Hustle. That's a dope ones dope one. uh, creation right there. Yes, indeed. Oh man. Oh. And I didn't. Oh, even, right on, Stephen I, Brown. I didn't even notice your your jacket. What's going on there? Well, well I, I was. I was. I did. So that is fine though. I was just trying to dress nice once in a while. I'm coming out to see you at the game, so I. Oh yeah, I, I just heard that again. Yep. James Ham with us, 1320 Kings Insider, uh, live from the boiler room of the Golden One Center. Uh, I believe, I've never been to the boiler room, but I believe this is James Ham's office uh, as you uh, enter inside. That's not boiler true. Room, just, boiler room brawl. Come just in. in the media room, right? Like you're in the, the little back media room by the by where everybody eats. Isn't that where you are? Yeah, I'm in the, the back media room, the, the work room. Uh, yeah. But again, I, I don't like coming in here hardly at all. It's all cinder blocks, all four walls. Um, and then they shut the door so I could have privacy. But like, <laughs> I'm not super claustrophobic, <laughs> but you feel it in here. Like, I mean, it's, it's windy out in Sacramento. I mean, I am safe in case there is a hurricane or a tornado that comes through and just like takes Golden One Center away. Yeah. I'll yeah. still be sitting down here and won't even notice it. It does have like a bunker feel. You're right. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it, it, it absolutely does. Um, everybody should be subscribed to the Kings Beat podcast by now. You should be subscribed to the Kings Beat newsletter uh, by now. But you told a, a an, an interesting story that I think I've heard an abbreviated portion of that I'd, I'd love for you to repeat because we've talked we talked with Jason Jones, the professor, uh, Jason Jones yesterday about you know, the, the shortcomings of this organization when it comes to talking about injuries. And you had a story about Doug Christie uh, in, in I think it was the, the days and weeks leading him to getting traded out of Sacramento about an injury he had. Yeah, so Doug, uh, Doug had gone to, you know, the training staff a couple of times and said, hey, I have an ankle injury. And they kept saying, yeah, we don't see anything. They took x-rays, they took MRIs. I don't know that they, well, I think they took MRIs. I mean, at that point, we're talking about like probably 2004, 2005, right around there. Mm. Um, maybe even, I think it's probably 2004, um, where I, I, MRIs at that point were like outrageously expensive. Um, but he kept going to uh, them and saying, look, I have an ankle injury. They said, we don't see anything. So then he got traded to the Orlando Magic for uh, Catino Mobley out of nowhere. And I know Doug was not happy about that at all. He wanted to finish his career in Sacramento. That was his hope. That was his plan. So he got to Orlando. Things weren't going very well in Orlando. And uh, he said, hey, look, I I got something going on in here. And they looked and they said, okay, you might have a bone spur and they went in for what they thought was going to be like an hour long surgery to cut off a bone spur. 
and they found that he had had like a bone spur slash calcium growth that had like grown around his tendon and he ended up Mm -hmm. in like a six hour surgery and to to fix his ankle and it so the point is that you don't always see everything on an MRI or on an x-ray about what's going on. I know I broke an ankle playing in a basketball league years ago. Um, I went in uh, the next morning and um, I said, look, I, I've, I've, I felt it snap. I'm like, look, it's broke. And they took an x-ray and they said, no, you're okay. So they, they put me in an air cast and I walked around for a couple of days. I, I got like three days after the injury, the swelling started to go down. And I, I put my foot down. I'm like, oh, no, it's broke. So mm-hmm. I went back in. They took another x-ray and found a, a fracture all the way across my ankle bone that basically mm-hmm. when it swelled up, it had closed up on the x-ray. The x-ray couldn't see the break all the way across. Mm-hmm. As soon as the swelling went down, I literally had a break all the way across the ankle bone. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, like I, I'm not going to say that like Fox isn't experiencing. So Fox pain. broke his ankle. That's what you're saying in just yeah. the. The extra, t- t- can he tweet that out? James yeah. Ham says Fox broke his ankle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, I mean, we've all been injured, right? Like, and I, I think this one comes down to are you hurt or are you injured? And at the same time, you're 18 and 34 and the season's over. Mm-hmm. So I, I think we are making a mountain out of this when realistically, it's, what are we talking about? Like this, this season we, is all but we, over. We talked about that earlier, Kenny and I did about how it, it feels like if this if this exact injury under these exact circumstances had happened last year at the time he was cooking, you know, rather than him getting you know a bad bout of COVID, and he you know it, I don't think there are as many questions, but I think that you talked about making a mountain out of a molehill. Molehill. I think everything is compounded by the team is terrible. Like. Even if you thought the team was going to be bad, they're far worse than far you worse. could have imagined. Mm-hmm. Um, De'Aaron isn't playing up to what he was last year. It feels like he's aloof. And oh, by the way, the trade deadline is eight days away. Feels like all of those things have made what may very well be just a simple everyday sports situation feel significantly worse. Yeah, I, I totally. That's that's kind of where I'm at too. Plus. I, I'm going to get, I said this, I don't know how many times I've said this, like this team walked into the season with like a 15 man roster and two guys who had requested trades who did not want to be in Sacramento and who, one of which almost got traded uh, on draft night. And then the other one, which they tried to find a trade and couldn't get rid of them. Um, That's part of this season. It is part of this season. It's part of the dysfunction. It's part of, uh, Again, 15 guys bought in, stacking days, as they called it. Everyone's pulling the same way. Everyone wants the same thing. And as soon as adversity struck, uh, number one, the Kings franchise decided to jettison Luke Walton because, of course, firing coaches always works. It's a time-tested thing, especially here in Sacramento. It's worked so many times that they just keep doing it. Um, And so, like, you have to look at this season in its – totality and it started in September with these guys still being part of the team it's still going on now with these guys still being part of the team the trade deadline is here we're waiting to see if all of these guys are still going to be part of the team and at this point I think you know we have to look at this as as part of the issue as well like they need resolution this team needs resolution they need to move forward with who they're going to move forward with Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's part of what we're seeing from Fox. Like, he, he's ready to move forward with whoever it is that he's moving forward with or whatever team he's moving forward on. He's ready for that. Uh, and, you know, so that, that plays into this, I believe. You um, mentioned earlier about you know, not seeing everything on an MRI. And Fox mentioned about how he hasn't had the mobility uh, in his ankle for a long time for all the sprained ankles. Is there any thought from anybody you've heard of, of possible possible surgery? No. No, I haven't heard anything. I mean, mm-hmm. I, like literally from the outside, from from his camp, I, I've heard nothing. I, I, I literally have been told it's not a sprained ankle. Mm-hmm. Like it's 
it, it's not. He's got a sore ankle. So mm-hmm. you yeah. mentioned, um, you know, t- the, the starting the season with two guys, you know, not wanting to be here and Buddy and Marvin and your partner uh, over on the Kings Beat podcast, uh, Sean Cunningham slid in a sneaky little note there uh, during a discussion in that, yeah, James, it wasn't just two. <laughs> yeah, I think, okay, so there's a, they're not just two that, that requested, I mean, there are two that requested trades, mm-hmm. but there might be more than two that were like, I'm fine if I'm not here. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like there might have been other players that were like, look, I'm okay if I'm not brought back, or I'm okay if you find a different home for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I think that that's the case. Like, uh, and, you know, Sean said that multiple – Sean and I have interesting discussions about this because, like, I told him at the end of last season, like, we had discussions off the record because, like, we talk – media members talk all the time. Like, look, like, this team is not moving forward with Marvin Bagley. He goes, well, don't say that because they – he might still be here. And here we are, and he's still here. <laughs> and, and there's Sean a dis- tried to warn you. <laughs> yeah, but there's a <laughs> distinction between – they wanted to move forward with him and they are they're still moving forward with him because that's the way it worked out Mm -hmm. which is where we're at they weren't willing to give up marvin for nothing um and uh you know again like he he's hurt again at this point but um they even walked into the season and he he didn't even play he wasn't part of any plan for this season at all it wasn't until uh they were forced and putting in in that he started to become more and more of the of the team but look at the first I mean, what's he played at this point? 30 games? Hmm. Um, and the reason why he's only played 30 games out of 46 or whatever it is is because he wasn't in the rotation. He wasn't part of anything that was going on at the beginning of the season. And that's not because they hate him or that he's a bad player or it, it, he just didn't fit. That that was the reason. He didn't fit. He didn't want to be here, and the team wanted to move forward. Now, you fire the coach. You do all of these things. Like, this season – it's not just stressful for like the ownership or management who's trying to figure out how to how to correct this thing. This is horribly stressful for the players. I mean, it's stressful for media. Like covering mm-hmm. a team that loses every single day mm-hmm. is is brutal. Like it's brutal for us. Like you sit there watching I like um, you know, and it's not like I don't have people all around me that are either Kings fans or basketball fans in general. You know, when I I got my kid who has, like, bled, like, watched this team every single day because his dad covers the team his whole life, and he's like, I just don't know if I can keep doing this. Hmm. That's a problem. And, Y'all broke mini ham. God, yeah. <laughs> the streets caught a body. And that's, not even, that's not even ham. many me. That's the 18 year old who's, who's. Oh, y'all broke big ham too. Yeah. Y'all just yeah. yeah that's the whole ham family. Yeah. And, and, you know, like as a media member, I'm not allowed to be a fan and I haven't been a fan of, of you know, teams, basketball mm-hmm. teams in a long time. Mm-hmm. I can be a 49ers fan. I can be an A's fan. Not when I'm there covering them, but I can. Uh, but when you're a media member, you're not allowed to be a fan. So I never even look at it that way as much as I got to go to work every day. But to hear that from like people in your circle and it's like, mm-hmm. man, this is tough. I, I get texts from people all the time. Like, I, I just can't do this. I can't, mm-hmm. I cannot watch this anymore. And that's, it, it is really hard. Like, I, that's why I feel for the fans. I feel for the fans who are sitting here on edge wondering whether, uh, you know, again, the Kings broke the Aaron Fox whether he can be fixed. I, mean, I watch, you know, we asked those questions of Halliburton a couple of times over the last two weeks. Like, are, are they going to break Tyrese Halliburton? And to me, it's just, that's the sad part. Like, you worry about doing irreparable harm to young players. And and can they be part of something bigger and better, whether it's in Sacramento or somewhere else? That's mm-hmm. that's always an issue. Yeah. And, and those are real concerns. And and I understand them, but I go back to what I've continued to say, and I'll say it again here. They got to find this organization, the front office, uh, ownership, whatever. They got to find the people that can't be broken. That's what it's going to take to turn this thing around, in my opinion. The talent, first and foremost, always first and foremost, is the talent because <laughs> th- that's that's the bottom line with everything. You need the talent. That'll turn things around quick. 
but you also need people that aren't going to be um, overwhelmed by the the stories, the rumors, the history of playing basketball in Sacramento, playing for this organization. Yeah, I, I made the correlation earlier. I, I don't know if he, he's a good owner or not, but as a 49ers fan, in 2017, it was it was nasty. <laughs> the perception of Jed York, like yeah. they they thought he was the worst. We talked about flying banners around Levi Stadium. Sell the team, Jed York. He he was a pariah in the Northern California sports landscape, at least with fans. In my opinion, he's no different of an owner in 2017 than he is today. But he got the right people in here who didn't worry about all that. They worried about came coming in, changing what was broken, fixing it, and 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 turning this whole thing around. And I like that's why I hear Kings franchise can't break this play, can't play. I need somebody that can't be broken. That's what's gonna take to turn this around. This is a mess. You need some you need some it's not just gonna be a regular guy that turns this around. It's gonna be somebody that can't be broken. But here's the problem. I, I agree with what you're saying, and I understand what you're saying. The problem here in Sacramento is as soon as adversity hits, there's always a panic button that's hit. That means that someone's got to be fired. There's adversity. We must fire someone. And we just keep seeing it time and time again. So at some point, if you can't have a plan, stick to the plan. Like, look, at, at this point, like I, I've talked to Monty McNair quite a few times. I think he's a really, really bright guy. I think given enough time, there's a good chance that he could make changes that are positive. But what you can't do is have these situations where ownership is pushing, pushing, pushing for wins when you don't have the talent to do it. And then you put a realistically, what we're dealing with right now, we're in a a situation where the ownership wants to win now for a play-in tournament when you're 16 games under 500 and it impacts everything that you're doing it impacts how why you fired your coach it impacts why uh, you decided to you're you're pushing forward at trade at the trade deadline it, it's like if this team doesn't like open their eyes and realize that they literally have the fifth worst record in the NBA and they're looking at a top 5 pick in the lottery and then value that pick that pick should be gold unless you're trading it for a star and in this monster package that has never materialized <laughs> then then you need to rethink what this season means you need to rethink it right now you need to go back to your general manager and say look i get it we're not going to make it i don't care we're three games out that doesn't matter you're so bad it doesn't matter somehow you get in you back your way into the playoffs in this season? Like, what does that really matter? You think that's going to bring the fans back? The fans that you just saw you drop 16 games under 500? Like, that's not what you're looking for. You need to reevaluate who you are right now. You need to pull back some of this pressure, and you need to make decisions that are best for this, this franchise long term. Not best for a general manager trying to save his job today so he doesn't get fired this summer. Mm -hmm. Like, because that's when you start making bad, stupid moves just to just to save someone's job. And if I'm Monty McNair, Monty's a good guy. He's a basketball guy. He, the struggle between saving myself and saving this franchise long term, it, it's got to be the most difficult internal struggle of all time. And at the end of the day, you're like, look, I could just swing for the fences here and if I strike out, I could hamstring this franchise for years, but I won't be here. So mm -hmm. why does it matter? Mm -hmm. And that is the culture that they have created, that that is where he's at. Like, if he's a bad guy and wants to destroy this franchise for years by making a bad trade right now just to get this team in the, in the play-in tournament for the 2021-22 season, that's just – that's that is a culture of losing and it's a culture of losing that you cannot recover from 
And so that's where I'm like, look, you have to, like people will get broken. It doesn't matter how strong they are. They can't, you can break anyone. This franchise has proven it. You can break anyone. Well, two, two things with that one though, real quick. Number one, our guy, David Jackson, I think it was David Jackson, brought it up in the, in the chat and he's right. They didn't break Boogie. Now they didn't do right by him, but they didn't break Boogie. Boogie was not broken when he was here. He was committed. He said, I'm here. We're going to change this around. So there, there are guys that you're not going to break. Now, that's a whole nother subject. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Let me touch on you. Maybe you couldn't break him, but that didn't mean he didn't break others. That's fine. I understand that, but you well, didn't no, break him. That, that's not fine, though, because you can't succeed. He didn't succeed not because he didn't have enough talent. He didn't succeed because he didn't succeed. That, so, well, so, that's, what I'm saying is that's fine. I'm not talking about his shortcomings, but you said everybody can be broken. He wasn't broken. He wasn't broken. Now, if you get a boogie that can't be broken and can treat others the way they need to be treated, now you're cooking, <laughs> right? But you need to find somebody with that type of mentality that I, I'm I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be we're gonna change this. Now, the other thing that I really want to hear from you, you talk about now we're getting into the business of basketball. Wow. My the favorite. business of basketball. <laughs> and you, from what you know, are the Kings losing money? Well, yeah, I think every professional team is losing money. So, uh, like, I don't think that there's any way that they couldn't be. I, I know that in the first, like, three months of the pandemic, four months of the pandemic, they had lost $100 million. So I'm just being real. I'm not trying to defend ownership or anything else like that. But not to to tank or to just not worry about people coming to the building anymore is saying is is the Vivek or anybody saying I'm okay continuing to lose money am I correct is it that simple yeah I, I think he's willing to continue to lose money okay. uh, now does he want to lose money no does he want to make this team better yes like that's that's one of the most difficult things when it comes to the conversation about Vivek Vivek doesn't like he wants to succeed. He's not someone who, you know, again, we can look around the NBA. You can look at your Robert Sarvers. You can look at your, your Dolans, all of these, like there are bad owners. Like Donald Sterling was a bad owner, mm -hmm. bad for a myriad of, of reasons. But like Sean made this point on the podcast the other day, like, it's not like Vivek has done something illegal here. It's not like he's doing something so egregious that he just gets thrown off the board and you're out. Like, he's tr he's got a hundred and thirty million dollar payroll. Like the Maloofs had a fifty eight million dollar payroll and barely could scrape together that. This dude's got a hundred and thirty million dollar payroll. They're not the the bottom of the NBA. They're not even close. They're probably, I, I don't know, top fifteen, maybe top eighteen in the NBA of, of payrolls. Like he has spent. He's built this building. He built this entire plaza and everything you see here. Like a lot of the money came from him. And when other owners can't come up with their money, he steps in and gives that money. He he covers uh, for for the whatever it might be. Now, he might be taking some of their percentage, but that doesn't mean that he's not like he's not. This is not intentional. That's I think that's the mm. worst part. Right. Mm. It's that this isn't intentional. This is not something he has set out to destroy the Sacramento Kings. And I'll say Vivek is sitting in the front row at half court every single game watching every single one of these meltdowns. Yep. He's not running. He's not hiding. Now, he's not talking to the media, but that doesn't mean he's running or hiding. And right. so, like, look, I, I think there is some sort of perception. And if somehow this thing switches, but the problem is – that you have to choose a path and you got to stay the course and you got if they didn't fire Dave Yeager this team was in the playoffs if they didn't fire Vlade Divac after the eight game bubble experience which was a joke because four of their players had COVID leading up to the bubble Rashawn Holmes gets sent to his room for 10 days for going to get chicken wings you lose you lose in the bubble if they don't lose in the bubble, I almost guarantee you that Vlade Divac is still the general manager and people mm -hmm. could groan. Well, I'll tell you what. If Vlade mm -hmm. Divac was still the general manager, Bogdan Bogdanovich is still on the Sacramento Kings, and the Sacramento Kings make the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. Like Probably. I, I mean, this isn't— well, Allegedly. They missed, they missed by two games, and they had nobody. 
you know, and again, like that's one of those situations where you probably would have had Kent Bazemore. You probably would have had uh, guys like Alex Len brought back as opposed to bringing him back this year. Like there are so many times where this franchise, by just not staying the course, by not having enough patience, by repeating the same exact thing again and again and again, that they have set themselves back. And, and that's the hard part. You know, you mm. got to stick with something. You got to write it out. You, you can't even like, like I, I, I've told you guys this, there's one player in, in like the last decade of Kings basketball that signed a contract that was more than two years that lived to play out his entire contract. That player, Costa Kufis. That's the only dude That's who signed crazy. a, he signed a four year <laughs> contract, played out the entire four years, even if the last half of like both of his final two seasons, he sat on the bench. No one else gets to play out their contract. You never stick to a plan. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, you know, all of this. Like, it, it's not just the players. It's players. It's coaches. It's assistant, assistant coaches. Like, I, Luke Walton had three, uh, three defensive coordinators and two offensive guys. Mm-hmm. Like, in three years, that's what he had. So – what does that tell you about the players that played for him? De'Aaron Fox has been here five years. He's on his his third coach, and if he's here next year, he'll be on his fourth coach. That's crazy. He's Alex Smith. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, Alex how Smith. do you have right? stability in your franchise if you're unwilling to be stable? Mm-hmm. And you know, the longest tenured anything here in Sacramento is me and Sean. Hmm. Mm. Well, damn. <laughs> Like, I, not, I mean, not like, like, I'm just trying to be realistic. Like, that is the problem. The best thing that could happen right now is that Kings cool, uh, pull back. They have an honest discussion with Monty McNair. They tell him, you're going to be here. Don't do anything that to just change the outcome of this season. Mm-hmm. Try to make us better for next year. Try to do what's right to get us better for next year and the year after. That's your job right now. We're not going to make the playoffs. We get it. Do you think Monty knows that? That they're not going to make the playoffs? Yeah, like this year's. Yeah, shot. that dude's that dude's an analytics guy. He knew they weren't making the playoffs in like the first twenty games of the season. Like when it didn't turn, you knew exactly then that this thing was like going off its rails. Like they kept showing, oh, we might be. What is it? It's the the Charlotte game, right? They win. They beat Charlotte by thirty. Mm-hmm. They come out two days later at home and lose to Indiana. Like you knew right then. Like this team does not have the uh, the focus, the the fortitude, the whatever you want to throw out there. They don't have it. So Monty's being told to go in a direction, and the direction is, and maybe that's changed over the course of the last seven games. But the direction, at least at some point, maybe leading into this streak, was playing, 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 playing. Oh no, no! I still think it's playing. I still yeah, the, that's. That's the oh, problem. Oh, it's still playing. Jesus. You're Christ. three games out. You're still th- you're three games out. That's the problem. You do not you have to change what your goal is at this point. A- Jesus. And you know man. what? Like unbelievable. It- it's tough because again, we're going to get to this offseason and if they do keep McNair, do you allow McNair to hire a new coach or do you not? Because that's the problem. You keep doing this where you have a GM who hires a coach, the GM loses his job a year in. And then you got the coach, you're stuck with the coach for three years. The new GM has to take on that coach, which is always tenuous at best. Maybe we'll keep him a year, maybe we won't. Like, this is a a rinse and repeat situation. We're in Groundhog Day every single so, time. Okay. So so the, 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 there's one of two answers. Like, so are you suggesting that you, you keep Alvin? Well, I, I don't know. What you have to do, you have to decide one path right now. You have to decide a path this summer. And I'm not saying keep Alvin. I'm not saying fire Alvin. I don't think what's happening Alvin here. has to go. I, I love Alvin Gentry. And, and yeah. I made the argument yesterday. Not only does Alvin have to go, the rest of the staff has to go too. Yeah, well, I'm not I'm not totally – like whatever is going to happen here is going to happen. Like that's not my job to say who should get fired and who shouldn't at this point. This is – like we're just watching this unfold. This is – we're we're at a like a like 15 car pileup. We're still trying to figure out how many bodies are in cars. Still, 
that's where we're at. We're not to that point yet. But we're, that's my concern, though, is like Alvin and Doug and Lindsay and Stacy and Rick, they're all in the pileup. No, I, I agree. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm not to I, like, look, it, we got to figure out this summer. What direction are you going in? And that means that if Monty's going to be the guy that leads you out of this, then you need to show that. And then you need to let him hire his coach, and it needs to be that he's going to be here, and you gotta, you gotta run it out. You you can't keep doing the same thing, and, and so that's what that's what's so difficult. Like I like there is no easy way to just flip the switch and fix this thing today. There's mm-hmm. not, and, and so the second that you can admit that, that there is no like eighteen point shot, when you're down eighteen. You know, even there six threes isn't going to help you because there's. I guarantee you, you're not going to get a stop every single time down the court. Like there, the only way to fix this is to grind it out, is to to stop with the the hail marys, stop firing people, um, get the right people in the right place, and push forward and try to develop something that's lasting and long term. If they went the route of we're we're shutting we're shutting down the studio. Like making another band on Chappelle. Right? We're shutting down the studio, and and we're we're moving towards the next year and beyond. Um, De'Aaron Fox, Rashawn Holmes, um, like, do, are they okay with that? In your opinion? Well, I, I mean, it, first of all, it's not for a player to be okay or not okay with something. Well, um, I, I say okay with it. Like, get me out of here. I'm not well, here for I, another I year old to come in here. Yeah. Get me out of here. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that the direction has to be right and it has to be, they have to be part of the discussion. And I, I think that a 28 year old um, or 29 year old or, you know, the guys that are around that age on this team, they're going to have a different idea than what a guy at 24 would have or a guy at 21. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm Tyrese Halliburton, I'm saying, hey, build this team around me right now. Like I got you. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, like, you have to like let me build around you Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know let me help you walk through this process like i i know ty plays 2k all the time like ty's gonna be like let me show you what the players that i would like to have around me but I, i think it's more than that it's like we're at this stage where like a normal team would admit defeat they would trade Harrison Barnes for expiring contracts and first round picks. Mm-hmm. They would probably do the same thing with, with Buddy Heald, whatever you can get for Buddy. They do the same thing with whatever you can get for Rashawn. You take a step back immediately to go forward down the road. And that mm-hmm. means getting back young players, getting back draft picks, and then starting to build the right way. Find the right pieces mm-hmm. now. And, and they it doesn't have to be like, I'm trading Harrison Barnes for the right piece. What I'm doing is I'm getting assets to go get the right piece down the road. And either you draft the right piece, you sign them as a free agent, whatever it is. Uh, like you have to start building this thing the right way. Stop trying to skip steps. Stop trying to stop getting halfway through one plan. And then like even like the Dave Yeager era, here's a Dave Yeager era. His first season, it's nothing but veterans. Like mm-hmm. they, they brought in Matt Barnes. They have Omri Caspi. They've got, you know, DeMarcus Cousins. They've got, like, look at that team. That team was, not, they brought in Aaron Flalo, uh, Ty Lawson. Like that team was deep and built around DeMarcus Cousins. By midway through the first season, they had traded everybody. Uh, Cousins was gone. You know, we saw the injury to Rudy Gay. Uh, there was a whole bunch of things happening all around the team, and that thing fell apart like super quick. Look, Mark Spears is here. Um, hey, that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a big deal. Yeah. Shout out the undefeated. We're on the radio. <laughs> Mark Spears, what's going on, man? <laughs> what's up, boss, man? Oh, no, that's adorable. That's, that's, that's my guy. That's, that's worth the. Guy. That's where we're gonna make sure that that clip lives on social media forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so the first year, we knew that's the big what, guns were going to be out tonight. By the way, Brooklyn's yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, we knew the big guns were coming. Brooklyn out. is in yeah. the house, so yeah, the exactly. big guns are in the house. So, to get back to the Dave Yeager era, first year you have <laughs> nothing but veterans. <laughs> the second year, you you draft Aaron Fox, you draft uh, Justin Jackson, you draft 
uh, Harry Giles, you draft Frank Mason, and you bring Bogdan Bogdanovich. You have five rookies, mm. right? We're starting over. And instead of starting over all the way at the beginning, they go, oh, let's go out and let's sign Zebo and let's sign Vince Carter and let's sign George Hill. Let's mm-hmm. not be so bad. Yes, you should have just gone full bad. Then the next season, all of those veterans are gone. The team wins 39 games. You have this stupid situation behind the scenes with Brandon Williams and Dave Yeager. You can't come to consensus, so you fire them both. And here we are. Like, the the misses, like, just stay the course. Dave Yeager had one year left on his contract. He wanted a three-year deal, an extension. He did not want to leave, just like Michael Malone did not want to leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, and shout out to Dave Yeager, who is returning to the bench tonight. That's uh, yep, yeah, yep. that's that's my guy. Uh, I texted with him earlier today. Yeah, he's uh, he's clearing the, the cancer situation, which is great. That's awesome. um, but Dave Yeager, if Dave Yeager was still the head coach the next year, I guarantee they would have been either in the playoffs or right there. And that's just not the way this team chooses to conduct business. You didn't get there. It's like, but three years, three completely different teams. Like, what is he supposed to do? Hmm. You can't find success that way. No, I hear you. I think uh, everything you said is spot on, Ham. Everything you said is spot on. One thing I would say, and and like I said, I always did this when Luke Walton, when they had him trying to get him out of here with pitchforks. I said, the guys in that locker room, they, this is what I was saying earlier, James. It, for, for the players, I'm guessing I'm coming from a player spot. You can't use Sacramento as a crutch. You can't use this organization as a crutch because I bet there's plenty of guys that are in there that are like, what? we can lose them by 30 or whatever. That's not my fault. That's what happens here in Sacramento. No, it's your fault. Like, you're playing. You got control. And I think part of it, what you're saying is 100% right. Like, they need to handle that aspect, but there also needs to be in that locker room accountability of we're not going to hear about how it's Sacramento and, and we, this is just what happens here. We can't control contracts. We can't control coaches, hirings and firings. Well, we can't control if we're not in a defensive stance, if we're just throwing the ball around and turning it over time and time again. And that's what we need to establish. If we take care of that and they're still doing the same things out there, then we can look at it and be like, Sacramento is just, it's just a mess over there, but we're not even doing that in our own locker room because we know everybody's going to bail us out and be like Buddy Hill, Marvin Bagley, De'Aaron Fox, Harrison Barnes. It's not your fault. It's Sacramento. Nobody wins there. No, play better. Play better. I agree with you 100%. Like, you can't use it as an excuse. The only thing that you can control on on any sports field is effort and energy. That's it. Like, go Mm -hmm. out there and play hard. That's all. That's I think that that is something that has been repeated so many times that people keep – they stop listening to it. It Wins and losses, they they almost don't matter. Like, sure, you, you need to win eventually. But in Sacramento, it's, it's still a blue-collar town. Like, you go out and you play hard, people will embrace you. People will love you. This, this uh, franchise for the first – I think it was 19 years in existence – sold out every single game. Mm-hmm. And they were horrible, horrible – for most of that time, from 1985 until 1998, they made the playoffs one time, the 95-96 season. They made the playoffs their first season in Sacramento, the 85-86, and then not until the 95-96 season. It wasn't until they made the playoffs, didn't make it the next year, and then started to completely fall apart that that's the first time you ever saw a, a game that was not 100% sold out, mm-hmm. like the 97-98 season. The 98-99 season, they rebuild it, sellouts from then until 2006-2007 when this thing died down. And again, the fans kind of lost what what it was they they had. Outside of that, so we're looking at literally one season (laughs) where the entire arena wasn't sold out. Now we're talking about six, 7,000 fans in the stands and the the box score telling us that there's 13,000. Like, so... So again, like there, there's a uh, you you you're damaging the fan base. You're damaging people like my son. That's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You're you're turning mm-hmm. people. You've lost entire generations of kids that should have been growing up Kings fans who are now Golden State Warriors fans. 
So the thing that you have to do is, uh, it's so hard to do, is to be patient. And, and the hardest thing for me is that, like, I always get stuck preaching patience, right? But then the franchise doesn't listen to what, like, not only what I'm saying, but literally they're asking for you to be patient and stick with them. Mm. And then they're not patient. Mm. They're the ones who violate the trust of the patient clause. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. we're supposed to be patient. <laughs> oh, but look, we can't be patient. We got to fire another coach. We've mm -hmm. got to fire someone else. And so that, to me, that's just, uh, no. it's crazy. It's crazy. You mentioned this a, 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 a second ago about Vivek sitting courtside, but not speaking to the media. Do you think he should? Do you think Vivek should sit down with James Ham and Sean Cunningham and talk? Heck yeah. Heck yeah, he should. I mean, look, Joe Dumars has been with this franchise for like two and a half years. We have never spoken to Joe Dumars. Like he's walked by our table that uh, in the outside the practice facility and like, hey, what's up, Joe? That's it. Like he mm. walks by, he's like, hey, what's up, guys? That's it. We're not allowed. So, yes, at some point, Vivek Ranadive, like he has to. He has to answer questions. But it can't be the same stuff that we've heard before because that's why he's not talking to us. Like they don't want to hear the jazz band stuff, like like mm -hmm. the organization like as a whole. Um, you know, I don't want to hear it. Like, I, yeah. But, Anyway. You put it on. You 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 were on one today, James. You, you as as they Mars say in the culture, Mars. James had time today. <laughs> James had time today. Um, I I don't know if you have got other. St I mean, we'll, we'll let you go. I got a few you say, minutes. You, yeah, you I got say few whatever minutes. you. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, we do have to take a break. That is, you know, yeah. this is radio, so we'll we'll uh, we'll do the stuff that allows us to all be employed. And we'll come back. Maybe James will be here. Maybe he won't. Maybe Mark Spears will be here. Maybe make Spears. Maybe Mark will be. Uh, 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 messing up James' hair uh, when we return here. Uh, but <laughs> either way, <laughs> lots more Kings Talk on the way here on Sacramento's home for real Kings Talk. It's ESPN 1320. And there's Mark Spears. <laughs> Enter stage left. Yep. I, I am it. on the radio. You want to say hi? Ham was like Adrian Beltre. Don't touch my hair. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, don't, don't do that. Mark Spears. Hello, Mark. What's up, baby? Sacramento. What's going this on, is, man? Yeah, I can't hear you. My, my man got his hands. I can't hear a word anybody's saying. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's, he, he, he. There you go. Now, it, what's up, Mark? What's going on? I, trying to sit here and eat my uh, smoothie, man. I got a chocolate one. <laughs> that's a chocolate peanut butter smoothie. <laughs> there you go. There what's you happening, y'all? Y'all good? Yeah, we good, bro. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. We in well, commercial break, so don't worry about anything, anything being clunky, man. We're good. We oh, are. I wanted to be live, man. We, we oh, are. We can be live, live in a couple yeah. minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, we're live on YouTube. We're live on Twitch. There's, you know, 350 something people watching. Oh, yeah. I was about to curse then. I ain't even going to Oh, you can cuss. Yeah, we do that all the time. That's that's the beauty of the live stream uh, uh, when we're not on the radio. That's bonus content. Oh, okay. Hey, and maybe, maybe I just don't have the, the whole uh, AirPod thing down. Is there a way we can work that out? Mark, get one AirPod, you get the other one? Say that uh, that's probably hey, insane. Hey man, I got work to do, man. I, 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 <laughs> I'm in, I'm in the home. Y'all, hey, y'all three getting paid. I ain't getting paid. Well, y'all gonna give me an earpiece? Y'all gotta, you gotta check with that earpiece. We'll, we'll uh, we'll, we'll Is there a check with that earpiece? To see to check. Uh, I gotta get that bag, bro. I can't hear you. I can't hear. I can't hear you. <laughs> like, so, yeah, you broke up, Mark. I, I, yeah, you broke up, man. <laughs> Something wrong here. Awesome. Something wrong here. Appreciate you, man. brother. We appreciate you. <laughs> Hit me up when y'all need me for real, though. I'm we'll back. do. We'll do. I'm call your ass tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I will call your ass tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, you said hit us up. You said hit you up, Mark. I don't know what you wanted to do. That's funny. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, Mark, if you, Mark. like, we, we've got... 25 minutes of show left. If at any point you have to go, just say, guys, I got to go. I'm sick of talking to you. Like, we'll, we'll be fine. There's no problem. No, I'm all right. All right. Uh, like, yeah. Guys, sorry. There's a trade that's just been made. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's oh, funny. Man. I, I may have cursed. I don't know. Did I curse? Um, oh, it's fine. It, it's funny. Like, all I do is curse. And I've said this before. Like, <laughs> Bro, well, y'all don't know. When we hit and broadcast, James, James, <laughs> 
James turned into Eddie Murphy at the end. Yeah. Delirious. Yeah, yeah. Shots fired. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, but it's funny, like, hearing Jerry Reynolds curse, that's, like, the – that's – wild <laughs> uh, like you you almost never get used to it but i, I yeah i love it when he yeah uh, i could where gary gerald would never i couldn't imagine jerry reynolds carson to be honest oh i could imagine jerry not gary though no i, I could gary, gary gerald carson. gary said a potty word the other day and and everyone like what <laughs> what <laughs> oh what what just happened he man oh yeah. goodness <laughs> oh man Oh, man. I don't think I'm any different today than any other day. You guys are you guys are crazy. You're good every time. Yeah, <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> the I, numbers I think, the numbers show it. Monday was a little rough. I'll, I'll be honest. Monday, I, I think we were all a little rough on Monday. I, you know, like it was a bad weekend for. for so Monday was not a happy day. That's funny. I thought. Well, you weren't here yesterday. I thought yesterday's show. Yesterday's show was the awkward show. Like I just we couldn't couldn't yeah get in a flow, and then uh. Yeah, no, today was money. I don't know. It was, yeah. it was great. Well, no, like thought, people people keep saying, like, how do you fix it? And it's like, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Like, just step back. That's that's what it comes down to. Well, let the people you hire do the stuff you hire them to do. Always. Yeah. And, I mean, you can be part of a conversation. You can be part of, like, the discussion on, you know, what draft pick or what player. But at the end of the day – it's it's those people that are you know how do you fire someone when you were part of the discussion on whether they were going to make the, the pick the trip player that they ended yeah. up picking. Hang on, him. Hey, y'all, hit the thumbs up by the way, especially in YouTube. Hit the thumbs up. Thirteen twenty on the radio on the Odyssey app. We're live on Twitch. We're live on YouTube, uh, Facebook Live as well. No matter where you're watching, uh, hit the thumbs up. Um, Stilo and KC brought to you by McQueen and the Violet Fog, the smoothest gin in the world, handcrafted in Brazil. McQueen and the Violet Fog are giving away a five hundred dollar gift card to create the ultimate big game watch party for your chance to win. Visit the contest page on ESPN thirteen twenty dot net and learn more. Again, ESPN1320.net, your opportunity to win a $500 gift card courtesy of our folks over at McQueen and the Violet Fog Gin. Our man, James Ham, 1320 Kings Insider, uh, still here with us, hanging out with a little bit longer because, well, he's at the arena. I mean, it ain't like the game is about to start. Uh, so, James, like, we were actually just talking during the commercial break after a nice little brief conversation with Mark Spears. Um your 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 dialogue today has been well received by many here uh, in the chat house, uh, but you're like this is this 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 is what we talk about every day. Like these are the this team is frustrating, and there's an easy way to fix it. Let the people you hire to fix it fix it. <laughs> and yeah. someone so- someone or some ones seem to keep getting in the way. Yeah, I, I mean, and again, I don't think it's intentional. It's just you want it now. It's like the, what is it, Veruca Salt, right? Like it's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory yelling and screaming, I want it now. And <laughs> that's not the way the league works. And like I, I, I've tried to explain this to the good people of Portugal, right? <laughs> Namias Keita is not going to play 35 minutes. Again. Someone asked me, is there any way that Namias Keita could be named to the Rising Stars Challenge? No. Like, it, And that's not because I don't think he's good enough. It's because yeah. he hasn't played enough. That's not right. the way the league works. Mm-hmm. And are we getting to a point where Namias Keita is going to play, you know, 25 minutes a night? Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. We should we're, – we're at that point. Like, no one expected it right now. But – like there is a way that the league works, and if you don't understand how the league works, and if you're not patient enough to write it out and to to build a team the right way and to like do the things that matter, to stick with employees, to stick with coaches, uh, to stick with player development, like a, a strategy, like from top to bottom, like you have to stay the course at least for stretches. And there are times where it's like, look, this is not working. It, I, the crazy thing, Vlade Divac is the was since Jeff Petrie is the longest tenured GM. 
Like mm. Pete D'Alessandro lasted like five minutes and Monty McNair's like he's a year and a half in, but already two seasons and two trade deadlines. And uh, like you have to, at some point, give people enough time to try to make the changes. And I agree with Jerry Reynolds when he says that anyone that tells you in the NBA that they have a five-year plan, they don't have any plan at all. But that doesn't mean that you don't have, you know, plans that are based off of the same ideas that can't come back year after year. And you're making tweaks trying to find the right, like, chemistry, the right fix, the right everything. I mean, we knew last year when uh, Jonas Valanciunas ripped Chemezi Metu off the rim and threw him on the ground and broke his wrist, which should have been not only a flagrant two, it should have been like a three-game suspension. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think we've seen anything that egregious in the league, even like the the takedown where Caruso broke his wrist by mm -hmm. uh, Grace Allen. Oh, <laughs> like, there was one thing, like, this was intentional. He grabbed a guy by the legs that were up in the air and pulled him off the rim. Like, when that team, like, helped Chemezi Metu off the, off the ground, but no one stepped up and tried to punch Jonas, uh, Jonas Valanciunas, that showed you everything you needed to know about the group. So why didn't you make changes to that specific thing? Mm. Like, you knew you did not have enough toughness. Mm. And adding Tristan Thompson, that's not going to change the, the metrics of the team. He was not going to play. He was brought in as a backup to the backup. Like, he was brought in to in case something bad happened to Rashawn Holmes or you couldn't sign Rashawn Holmes, um, you know, he was brought in for that specific reason. Uh, and, and then it didn't happen. And so, like, where was the toughness? Where did you chase toughness? And I know they, they drafted Davion Mitchell, but, again, it's like we saw a, a group of players that have talent and that had some really, really good, like, positive things that they do you went into the offseason and you didn't address the negative things that they can't do. You didn't go out and, and that's what I mean by stay the course, but tinker, build around what you have and, and try to figure out something that will, will like work long term. And I mean, I think we're closer to this thing, like getting completely out of hand as far as like blowing up and like, than we are to like some small tweaks that will fix this thing at this point. But that's because you let it get this way. You fired a coach midseason. You you did these things that, like, are notorious for having bad outcomes. You know that because it's not because you watched someone else have that bad outcome. You you know it because you did it yourself already, and it already mm -hmm. had the bad outcome. Mm -hmm. So why do you keep doing it? That's not okay. Hey, James, I want to ask you a question that I got to be honest with you. I don't have an answer to. I'm not sure how I would handle it. But going back to – toughness having guys in here and, and and having guys all on the uh on the same page how do you think they should have handled some of those guys that yourself and sean cunningham alluded to that were like i'm not asking for a trade but you got me out of here like cool i'll be good with it because part of part of mine for me is like the same way i'm like buddy and marvin didn't want to be here get them out like get them out part of me would be like you by even having that you're not all in here like i gotta get you out of here i gotta move on because if it goes bad you're gonna be looking at the door like that's my thought i don't know if that's how i would handle it i may have a talk with them or whatever the case may be but how do you think they handled those situations you don't have to say no names obviously but those situations wrong as well just kind of letting that fester the same way we talk about letting buddy and marvin and, and their situations fester as well well i think you have to ask the why why do you not want to be here? Why is it that you're frustrated? Why is it that you would like to move on somewhere else? And I'm sure that that those questions, you know, that they, they did get to that point with some of the players. I, I mean, I think if you go into an exit interview at the end of the season, there's always like the day after the season and the day after that, there's always like a, a one or two day stretch where you pull everyone in individually and you have conversations called exit interviews. Every team does it. Um, it's usually when the Kings bring in a head coach and fire him. Um, that's his exit exit interview. Uh, but when it comes down to the players, you have these conversations. And first and foremost, I, like if you're not getting the honest answer from your players, then that's on you. Like you mm -hmm. need to be able to have really, really brutally honest conversations to with players. Questions like, do you 
want to be here moving forward? And if the answer is like, I'm not sure, then the next question isn't like, okay, well, let me, let me see if I can find you somewhere else to go. Mm-hmm. Then the next thing is, well, why don't you explain to me why? Like, I get it. You're frustrated. Why are you frustrated? Are there things I can do to make this the home for you? Like, how do I fix what it is? If, like, there are too many issues, then it's like, okay, look, uh, there's nothing. Or if it's like, oh, I need to get paid. Like, okay, like, look, you might get paid here, but you also could get paid somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But if it's that I look around the room and there are players here who aren't bought in and I want to be on a team that everyone is bought in and pulling the same way and I don't feel that that's the case here, then you need to start getting to the root problem. So my point is that some of these guys' problems could be that some of the other guys aren't bought in mm-hmm. and and are allowed to be there and not be bought in and allowed to play basketball when they're not fully committed to what's happening. And that's as frustrating as anything else. You know, like it, you're in a relationship. Like if someone else isn't bought in as nearly as much as you are, you should probably understand that. And then you should ask these questions like, why is it this is not working or is the – is there a way this can work? Is there something that I'm doing wrong? Or is there a situation here that you're uncomfortable with? Well, it feels like those questions aren't happening because we need to figure out why this thing isn't working and what would make someone more comfortable. Now, if it's like petty stuff, that's one thing. But again, there there's no secret here that there are players that haven't wanted to be here for like over a year. Mm-hmm. Like, they haven't wanted to be here. So why are they still here? And I know you owe them money, and I know you might package them in some bigger trade, but at what cost? Like, did you just throw away an entire season waiting for a Ben Simmons deal that isn't going to materialize? Is that what just happened? Hmm. Did you just deal with someone that didn't want to be here with the the mindset that maybe you could trade them for somebody, and that didn't happen, and you literally ruined not just an entire season, but a year of 17 players careers. Hmm. Uh, so, Jesse yeah. Jesse uh gave me uh, he he gave me a nightmare yesterday in which he said, "Hey, what do you think the chances are with Terrence Davis being out? Now Buddy sticks around the entire year." <laughs> I haven't slept since Jesse said that yesterday. <laughs> you know, the problem is he's under contract for two more years. The and fact four, that you thought about it that long is I'm just I'm never I'm not sleeping till next Friday clearly. 40 40 million dollars. I mean that's what and we could be faced with the same thing. Well, I couldn't trade him now, but there's a possibility I could trade him on draft day and I will be able to get the trade that I want. I mean, Sean even brought that up on the podcast. Like what if what if this all comes down to Ben Simmons becoming a Sacramento King on draft night or the day after the draft or like 2 days later? Like what if that's how this goes? And it's like Man, that's tough. But mm-hmm. at the same point, like, I'm not playing him. Like, mm. Jemias Ramsey just got promoted. Like, we're just going to hold you out, and we're going to make sure that you're okay. We're going to put you in bubble wrap and make sure you're okay for next season for some other team. Mm. Like, if that's where this goes, um, then that's, like, stop believing that he's going to change the outcome of a game in a positive way. Like, stop believing that. Because if you, you hold on to that belief and it happens one out of every six games, then that's on you. Like, there there's some point that you have to step back and say, I, I just got to do what's best. And, and also, like, that's 500 k Like, I think it's $500,000 if, if he plays 72 games or 70 games. Um, all right? The one thing you can take away that, that – would absolutely hurt that guy is playing time because he mm-hmm. wants to play. He wants to be out there, but that doesn't mean that, that he's doing what's right mm-hmm. to be out there. Like, you know, I, I too want to go play. <laughs> they don't let me walk out there. Yeah. So, Hey, I so, think he put the effort out there though. I, I you know, yeah. James Ham out there. At the- I, I believe he would too. And you I would have punched Jonas Valanciunas. <laughs> 
Look, I would have ran like hell after you did it. I would have got torn up. No way, man. We're going down. Like it is what it is. Well, like one of you are. <laughs> yeah, like I like I have no problems throwing down. Like it, it it happens. It is, you know, like that's fine. You gotta give the the punch and then go to hug the body. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can make a guy real a real tall guy real short real quick. Like <laughs> true story. Yeah. True so, story. Anyway. Um the game, the Kings tonight. Oh, there's the a game tonight. <laughs> the, the people playing. Uh, me and myself and Damien talked about this earlier about some of the things like we we want to see moving forward. And one of the things that we both agreed on is Davion Mitchell with Fox possibly out tonight and maybe in the future and whatever trades have whatever. Looks like he may be getting more consistent minutes, more consistent role and. I talked about some of the things that I saw from him earlier in the season that kind of gave me pause on, you know, what he might be moving forward. But I said that, and Damien said it as well, that I wanted to see him in a more consistent role, get more consistent minutes, and maybe that'll help, you know, with the numbers that we see and and his consistency in his play. And we've seen that kind of since Fox has been out. The numbers are up a little bit. The shooting percentages, things like that are up a little bit. Do you think it's uh, as simple as that for Davion? Like the more consistent role that he has, consistent minutes he gets moving forward, we'll see an uptick in his production and his and his um, the accuracy in his, his shooting and three point shooting and things of that nature. And is that something that you're looking forward to possibly with Davion Mitchell? Yeah, I mean, at at eighteen and thirty four, this is this is what you have to do. It's Davion Mitchell playing 25 to 30 minutes a night. Uh, you need to know what you have. Uh, you've already got him through what I believe he hit a, a rookie wall. Um, you know, I, I think you've already got him through. He had the, you know, he sat with COVID. He had a break. Um, he's had plenty of time to watch from the sidelines. Uh, there comes a point where a young player needs that that next step, which is playing time. And for that matter, the Kings need to actually see him on the court and and see if he is the type of player that can withstand, you know, 30 something minutes a night or 25 minutes a night. Um, not only that, but I think getting to play in the starting lineup, that's huge. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I don't think I need to see him start over Fox and Halliburton at, at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I do need to see him do is on occasion to line up against starting point guards and starting shooting guards and really have to go up against the the elite because that's the biggest thing. I asked uh, Halliburton about this uh, the other night after the game. I, I said, you know, what has it been like to play with him? And, you know, he, like, talked about, like, the growth and seeing, you know, how much work he puts in and all that stuff, and then he's getting better and all that. Um, but, you know, there are things that Davion does not do well, like distribute the ball, like run the offense. He puts his head down. He dribbles too much. Like, you need to have someone yelling at him, you know, like, your three seconds are up. You need to pass the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, these are things he needs to grow through as a player, as a young player, and figure out. And this season is going to be perfect for that. Like, you, that's where you have to give in and say, all right, we're done. We get it. We don't have a shot. Mm -hmm. Let's go play for – let's play our young guys as much as we can, and let's get some draft picks. And if we can get some young player who fits – in some monster deal, that's fine. If we're building for the future with a young player that we get in some massive deal, a 25-year-old, a 24-year-old, that makes sense. But what you don't do here is is go get go chase like a Jeremy Grant just to make a deal, and then sign him to a big giant deal, a big you know 112 million dollar extension. And next thing you know, you basically have the same tier of player that you already have, and that's not good enough. We've already seen that. So like. To get back to Davion, like this is that point in the season where, you know, it normally should happen 15 games later than this, maybe 18 games later than this, but we're at that point. It's time for him to to play a bunch of minutes, and um, and it's time for him to play most of those minutes over the likes of Buddy Heald and you know any other veteran that you have out there. Like it, Jemias Ramsey, I think needs to get some minutes at this point. He needs mm-hmm. to actually you got to test and see what he is. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where you're kind of at in this season, in my opinion. But that may not be what they do. What's the 
Uh, sorry. Go, go, go ahead, Casey. Specifically, I just want to see Davion in the open floor. I think that that's something that, you know, I think can unlock some of the things he can do out there on the court as well. Getting run. I see a lot of these guys running Fox, Halliburton, all these guys, but Davion specifically, when I think back to his time at Baylor, it would be getting a stop, getting it to him in the open floor and him deciding to finish or distribute uh, in, in the open courts. So I, I like to see some of that. Uh, well, just to that, to that point, we saw him the other night. He, uh, he went into the post post against what Mitchell Robinson and either Mitchell Robinson and Obi Toppin or uh, or Nerlens Noel, and he got swatted twice in a row in like a dirty fashion. <laughs> but he picked himself up and he kept going, mm-hmm. and that's what you want. Like learn, learn that that's not who you can be. You can't right. do that. You got to do more of the get into the body and use your left hand extended like Isaiah Thomas. And we're, we've seen his development and his shot get better and all that stuff. Um, but at the same time, like he, he has to get to a point just like everyone else does where you're actually making your teammates better and stuff like that. It can't just be about you getting comfortable. You mentioned that, you know, this is the time of, we need to see, you know, Davion getting run. The team needs to do this acquire more. This is stuff that whether it's the front office or someone above the front office has to figure out in the next eight days Hmm. because you, you can't move anybody past thursday so they have to choose a direction within the next eight days and part of me feels like if they don't wind up with the deal that they want whoever they is i honestly god don't know who the they i'm referring to is but if they don't wind up with the deal that they want more likely in the vein of the jeremy grant ben simmons miles turner demonza simonis thing that they're going to wind up sitting on their hands and on february 11th here comes buddy and marvin out for the sacramento kings and tt and everybody yeah. else, like I, <laughs> no. I, I, I just think this, I, like I don't think they're gonna have, I don't think they're gonna have a decision on a direction of this team in the next eight days. Well, and see, that's where I, I'm. There has to be a coming to Jesus talk behind the scenes about what this team is going for, like, and, and it should have already happened. Yeah, but certainly when you saw this, I mean, we're on a seven game losing streak right now. Like the season slipped away; it was already gone or close to it, and it's completely slipped away, and your losing streak's going to hit nine games after tomorrow, most likely, right? And then you reset and, like, like, can we beat a couple of these teams that we, like, I don't know who they should beat. I don't think there is anyone that you should say that, oh, this team should beat so-and-so because, I mean, this team lost right. to Detroit and Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is an A team in the league that they should beat, but at least the competition takes a step back. And these are teams that you're competing for lottery positions for, not teams that you're competing for the 10th spot for. And uh, look, if you make the right deal, this season could turn around enough where you do make a push for the 10, but that deal has to be so perfect. And, and, and it cannot be the wrong deal for the wrong piece just because you're trying to get there now. And just even if you think that it you're going to get there two years from now, like I bring up Jeremy Grant, like, I like Jeremy Grant. The problem mm-hmm. is he's he's like almost 28 years old, and mm-hmm. he wants another 112 million dollars onto the 18 million he's owed next year, and that's 130 million dollars for a player who's only been good on a horrific team. He's on, and he's only been good for two years, and so like, is he a solid NBA player? Yeah, he was solid in Denver. Was he solid in other stops? he was good stops? in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Did, he was, good in Oklahoma was he City. solid? Yes, he was solid. But was he incredible? No. no. So what I need is if you're going to make this deal now, like this has to be a deal for a 24-year-old, for a 25-year-old, this under contract for three years. So you have the ability to take that player and have him be part of the young core that you're moving forward with and growing with. It can't be a what amounts to a lateral move uh, if you're going to dump Harrison Barnes as well, like that's it, Jeremy Grant, Harrison Barnes, it's it's almost a lateral move. Hmm. If Jason Jones is the professor, what's what's James uh, preacher? No. <laughs> oh, boy. preacher in the chat. I think they call him preacher in the chat, man. But you was preaching today. That's thirteen twenty Kings Insider James Ham, creator of the Kings Beat. Make sure you become a subscriber over at thekingsbeat.com as well as the Kings Beat podcast both here uh, on youtube on the odyssey app on apple on spotify wherever you get podcasts from whether you want to watch it or listen to it um become a subscriber actually just subscribe to both 